Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining today. This is your host Nino and in today's episode we shall satisfy our curiosity as to whether the book 8088 version 2 is going to accept this USB drive on which there is a FreeDOS system in a 500 megabyte partition. In other words, if any reasonable USB operation were to be possible, it totally should work with that stick. And to make the whole thing more authentic, I didn't try that out yet. I just know this is the FreeDOS stick, I know I can boot from it, but whether this machine will take it, I do not know. So let's try that together. For well, I'm aware, you're supposed to plug in the stick before booting the machine, as this is not a hot pluggable device, not on DOS anyway. So, yeah, interesting to note, the port is upside down. So the stick goes upside down too. Uh, just that you don't force it and break it should you try that, I'm particularly noting it. Now, turning on the whole thing, let's see, will it have it or not? Okay, so we're starting with a little RAM check. Booting proceeds to the C drive. Starting MS-DOS. So, driver for the USB disk is being loaded. I'm seeing you add disk D. That would be most fascinating if I now can say, dear D, and get an answer of positive nature. Oh my god, I did! <laughs> this is the very first time in my life that USB has been working for me under DOS in any fashion. I mean, that is sweet, but we should not leave it till here. We should visit it and try to run an app from it, just to make sure that this is genuinely useful, right? After you issue dir, the book 8088 really takes that long until it comes back. So we're going to go now to D. Ah, no, I just type D colon, right? CD apps, I think I had here something. Dear, this time it should be faster. So, oh my gosh, shall we commit treason and launch Elvis, for instance? Yeah, see the Elvis. Dear and VI. That takes its sweet time. It is blinking over here. I'm not sure you're seeing that. Okay. Uh... Maybe I should try something else. <laughs> but maybe it's too late for that now. I don't know. We are talking of something which is half a megabyte big. It's not totally small. Shouldn't be giant either though. I'm putting you on break and trying to see what's up here. Well... That didn't do anything, so I'm just going to change to the AI languages. I rebooted the machine, and I'm again in the USB stick, and saying, dear, yeah, we are having here a variety of lisps and basics. Let's go to xlisp. This, this definitely should work. Great, so I'm going to start 
the small variant xlisp sml.exe as I have been trying that on this type of machine previously though not on the specific one and it did at that time in fact work so again blinking is occurring I'll put you on break to see will this lead to anything and you shall see in a moment was this a success or a failure but it does take a good while to start it oh ho no break necessary here we are cool it did also apparently load its init lisp and if I now say equal three to four nope and equal three three to three yes so xlisp is working we have apparently operational usb ah oh, yes okay let's then just exit this way now an interesting question would be can we write on the usb right so let us say type no actually echo echo hi there into a file into zzzzz.txt should be truly the last file in this directory right it's again apparently doing something here lots of blinking for such a short text And it did it. Can I type that out? Type zzzz.txt. Yes, I can. Very good. So, by this, I hope you see it is possible to use USB on the book 8088 version 2. However, it is exceedingly slow. And with that, thanks a lot for having joined today. Hope to greet you here soon again, and if you're not a subscriber yet, I would be thoroughly honored if you were to become a part of our club. So then, have a great day from me, and goodbye. Post dictum, this is what using the USB driver does to your memory, just to note when you consider to activate it or not. Second post dictum, after waiting for a long time, the VI clone did eventually come up. Elvis lives.